So in the previous video, we derived some nice expressions for the amplitude response and phase response of a discrete time system. In this example, we're actually going to work in a very specific example where we kind of derive the amplitude response or sketch the amplitude response using what I call the graphical approach. So this approach isn't horribly precise, but if you are without a calculator or without MATLAB or whatever you prefer to do your plotting in, it is a really good way to get the kind of general characteristics of a system figured out. So let's go ahead and work this example right here, graphical derivation of the magnitude response of a discrete time LTI system. So we're going to work with a very specific system here, and the system we're going to work with is given by this transfer function right here. H of z is equal to the following. It's equal to 1 plus z to the negative 1 on the numerator, and then on the denominator I have the product of two terms. One term is essentially a pole at um, angle 45, and the other one is a pole at angle minus 45, and they are close to the unit circle but not on the unit circle. These poles have a magnitude of 0.9. So usually what I want to do on something like this as a first go is just sketch what the poles and zeros of the system are, because we know the poles and zeros really determine the amplitude response of the system. And then once I have the poles and zeros figured out, I can kind of walk around the unit circle and sketch out how the amplitude response is behaving. So to be able to sketch the amplitude response first, let's sketch where these poles and zeros are so I can visualize them. So here are the poles, like I said, they are at 0.9 away from the origin, so they're not quite to the unit circle, which is this blue circle right there. And they are at an angle of 45 degrees and minus 45 degrees. The zero of the system is when z is equal to negative 1, because when z is negative 1, z inverse is negative 1, and then 1 minus 1 is 0, I get a 0 there. So there's my zero of the system right at the point z equals negative 1. And we are going to sketch here the amplitude response of the system as a function of omega. And we're going to follow kind of the procedure that we kind of derived in the previous video. I'm going to start at a point omega, and I'm going to walk around the unit circle and keep track of how far away I am from poles and zeros. The numerator is going to be the distance that I am from this zero over here. And the denominator is going to be a product of the distances between these two poles. So let's start right here at omega equals zero. That's this spot right here, omega equals zero. And I can think about how far away I am from this number right here, which is a fairly um, large number. I'm really far away from that. This distance right here is far. And then I'm kind of equidistant from both this pole and this pole. So I'm not sure exactly what that number is precisely, but if I just kind of give it a number, hey, let's, let's say that we're going to start right here when omega is equal to zero. And then I'm going to go ahead and walk around the unit circle. As I'm walking around the unit circle, I'm increasing omega in this direction. And one thing that's happening is as I get closer and closer to this pole, the distance is getting smaller and smaller. So as I approach that point on the complex plane, which is pi over 4, right? This is at an angle of pi over 4 or 45 degrees. One of my denominator terms is getting very small because the distance to that pole is getting very small. So as I approach that pole, what I think should happen is my denominator is getting small, so that means the overall amplitude response is increasing. So I'm going to increase up to that value right here. This problem has a lot of symmetry, so as I walk in the other direction to minus pi over 4, a very similar thing happens. I'm getting really close to that pole, which means there's a denominator term that's a small number, which means my overall amplitude response increases to the same number right there. So as I walk to pi over 4 or minus pi over 4, my amplitude response is going to do something like this, I think. Again, this can't be horribly precise. We're just kind of getting a general feel for how the system behaves. All right, let's keep walking around the unit circle. If I keep walking over to this point, that's the point pi over 2. I've rotated 90 degrees, so I'm out here somewhere now. And you can see what's happening. As I move past that pole, the distance between this point and this point is getting bigger. So my denominator terms are getting bigger. And also I'm getting closer to the zero, which is on the numerator. So my numerator is also getting smaller. So all that combines to means I'm going to have a ratio that's actually a smaller number probably than where I started 
over here. So it's going to decrease to some number. And the exact same thing happens over here as I walk to minus pi over 2. This is the point minus pi over 2, minus 90 degrees. So I'm going to get the same number over there again due to symmetry. This problem has a lot of symmetry. The problem you're working, um, you know, usually will because the way that uh, zeros, I'm sorry, uh, poles of systems come in complex conjugate pairs usually. Um, but you could work a problem where it might not have that symmetry. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to be looking something like this now. And then as I continue walking all the way around, eventually I get to that zero, which is at 180 degrees. Or I can think of it as being at minus 180 degrees. Those are the exact same point. And when I actually arrive at this point, I'm now a distance of zero away from the zero. So I'm right on top of the zero. I'm zero away from it which is a numerator term, which means at that point, I actually go to zero. So when omega is equal to pi, I actually go to a value of zero because I am zero away from that zero, and that's a numerator term. So I have zero divided by this distance here and this other distance down there. Zero over something is zero, so I get a zero at both pi and minus pi. So I claim that I think the amplitude response is going to look something like this in shape. Again, doing this really precisely, we should, we should plug in some of these numbers into our calculator and actually figure out when z is e to the j pi over 4, I can plug that in here and get a number out, and then I would know exactly what this number is. But if you're just trying to do a quick sketch and get a feel for is this a low-pass filter, is it a band-pass filter, is it a high-pass filter, just walking around the unit circle and kind of sketching the up and down can give you a shape that's usually pretty representative of the filter. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching this example of how to kind of sketch the amplitude response of a system without needing MATLAB or anything. You just walk around the unit circle and keep track of the distances between poles and zeros.